Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about Ethereum with respect to Bitcoin. So we're looking at the uh, ETH Bitcoin ratio. Um, if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on and like the video. And check out the Telegram and Discord channels in the description below. So I've also provided the Telegram uh, uh, URL here and the Twitter URL on the right side. And then also um, we do have a website with live updated charts, only Bitcoins on it so far but you can find that at intothecryptocharts.com. Um, so first, let's just go ahead and jump in. We're looking at um, uh, Ethereum uh, with respect to Bitcoin, and this is just you know, that ratio over time. And, and we've, you know, we can quickly see that this pattern that we've talked about before, um, the you know, kind of coming from the bottom to a first peak, second peak, sideways, down. First peak, second peak, sideways, down. Um, now, this has happened twice, um, that type of pattern, and we speculated that the next time we might start to move up at the earliest would be when Bitcoin holds the 20-week moving average. Um, and the reason for this is because historically, when Bitcoin does hold the 20-week moving average, it means the bull run has started. Um, now, we've only been above the 20-week for about a week or two, so I think, you know, I think we need to I think Bitcoin needs to continue to, to hold that um, for, you know, a few more weeks before we can really confirm that the, the bull run has started. Um, but if history were, were to repeat itself with this ratio, then we might expect to see a move um, uh, somewhat soon. And again, you know, if, if Bitcoin were to fall below the 20 week, then, you know, then I would say I'm, I'm more bearish in, in the short term with Ethereum. So let's let's dive into this a little bit more so it, it's sometimes hard seeing stuff on a linear scale but let's look at it on a log scale so here it becomes a little bit more obvious where you can see how significant this first run-up was on this first scale it doesn't really look that significant especially considered the consider uh, compared to the second one um i am sick by the way so this might be my last video for a couple days um so i will try try to get through this one but you can see that you know we really shot up uh, about 20x Ethereum with respect to Bitcoin back in in January of 2016, um, the first quarter of 2016, and again we shot up uh, in the first quarter of 2017. And I have noted many times in basically every Ethereum video that I've ever done, um, I usually note that you know buying in the fourth quarter of one year and selling in the first or second quarter of the following year was typically a good plan. And that is the case with respect to the US dollar and with respect to Bitcoin. We're not even looking at the, um, uh, if any type of fiat currency on here, but let's just look at Bitcoin. If you had bought in say December of 2015 and then sold in first quarter 2016, you would have done 20X with respect to Bitcoin if you had just say converted it back to Bitcoin. Um, if you had bought it in December of 2016 and then sold it, in you know the the second quarter of 2017, you would have also seen about a 20x. If you had bought it in December of 2018 and then sold it in January of um, 2018, you would have seen like maybe five or six x, depending on exactly when you got it. Even if you had bought it in December of 2018 and sold it in January or um, you know maybe even a little bit later on in 2019, you still would have seen. A, um, a a decent gain, but only maybe say 2x or so. Um, so the point that I was trying to make is that historically, not that it means anything, um, it doesn't mean that we have to continue that pattern, but it doesn't mean we can't use it to inform our decisions. Um, even if you use that to say, well, because it's done it every single year, I'm going to assume that this year is going to be different. I mean, this was probably the first January where Bitcoin did as well as it has. I mean, maybe there was one other January, but typically Bitcoin does not do well in January and it did re remarkably well this January. Um, but anyways, you know, you can, I, I think it's safe to, to look at past patterns um, and, and try to try to use those to your advantage. Um, now you can say, you can obviously say that you don't, you don't believe that, you know, the, the past, past data doesn't represent the future. Um, but again, I would say you can let it inform your decisions. And I should remind you guys, this is not financial advice. This is just how I look at the markets. So again, 
on a um, on a log scale, it becomes a little bit clearer. You see that first peak, second peak, sideways down, and then second cycle, first peak, second peak, sideways down. Um, so hopefully, we are about to do something like this again. Now, what caused these these moves with respect to Bitcoin? Now, you could argue there's a, there's there could be many things more fundamental. Um, you know, Ethereum was fairly new back back in 2015, so this this first run up could have just been some level of just price discovery just because it was so new and maybe it had maybe it didn't really have a whole lot to do with bitcoin but let's suppose that it did let's suppose that it was tied to bitcoin in some way now if it was then i've mentioned before that these these three main runs so this run here in 2016 first quarter of 2016 first quarter of 2017 and then the first quarter of of 2018 or even the end of 2017 into 2018, all all of them had a, had something in common. There was something with Bitcoin that was going on that was significant. In the first one, it held the 20-week moving average as support. That was Bitcoin held the 20-week moving average as support. And if you've seen my previous videos on Bitcoin, the 20-week moving average is historically where we find support during a bull run. Um, you won't find. And if you go back and look at even the last market cycle where Bitcoin went up for, say, two years, basically every single correction came down to the 20 week moving average, held it as support, and then it shot back up. Um, so consider that. So I, I, for me, I like to consider that when Bitcoin holds the 20 week moving average, we're in a bull run. Maybe that provided confidence to other coins like Ethereum. And that is when Ethereum uh, saw significant gains with respect to Bitcoin. In 2017, that corresponded to Bitcoin hit its, hitting its previous all-time high. And at that point, Ethereum also had a significant gain with respect to Bitcoin, and then it again had a gain when Bitcoin was at the end of its bull run. So those were the three key times in the last market cycle. Now, Ethereum has not been around that long, okay? So it's not like we can plot out like 12 years or 11 years of data. We just can't do it. But we could... But, you know, we could um, suggest that maybe there's several smaller market cycles of Ethereum Bitcoin within a Bitcoin cycle. So let's look at the return on investment from market cycle bottom. So if this is Ethereum Bitcoin, and we were to take, say, the ROI from this point here, where we were at our bottom, then it would be this blue line. This would be the ROI. So you can even see that the ROI from, from buying in the fourth quarter of 2015, your ROI on Ethereum Bitcoin, remember nothing in this video has to do with fiat currency, nothing. Um, your ROI would have been like 22 to 23 X. Second market cycle was, was when Bitcoin hit its previous all time high. Your ROI would have been maybe like 18 X. <clears throat> so you can see it's, it diminished some. And you can also see that the second market cycle lasted a lot longer than the first. Now some of you are probably wondering, well, Maybe this is another market cycle when Bitcoin was at the end of its bull run. And I don't really consider that to be a different one. I, I do like the fractal of, you know, first peak, second peak, sideways down, and then first peak, second peak, sideways down. Um, but let's just suppose it is. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not going to claim to, you know, know anything for a fact. Um, oh, here, here you can see the Ethereum Bitcoin ROIs for each market cycle, or I said say mini market cycle. Um, and you can compare them on a log scale, and we're, we're doing it since, uh, versus days since the bottom. So the ROI from that market cycle bottom. <coughs> so here would be if you considered that third when Bitcoin reached the end of its bull run. Um, around that time, if you had taken the market or that, that local minimum and looked at the ROI, it would have only been, say, like, you know, maybe 3x or so with respect to Bitcoin. So that's not, that's not incredible. But I mean, I know a lot of people today would love to see uh, a 3x return with respect to Bitcoin. Um, so it's nothing to scoff at. And we can look at it on a log scale and, and see how it compares uh, more easily with these other um, market cycles. So one of the things I should note, too, is that, um, you know, each market cycle, let's just suppose that, um, uh, you know, that, that we're seeing, well, well I, I guess I should say, you know, again, I've already, I already mentioned that this was when Bitcoin held the 20 week. This was the market cycle 
potentially caused by that. This was the, the red one was the market cycle potentially when Bitcoin reached its previous all time high. Um, and the green one was when it hit the end of its bull run. <coughs> but um, let's just suppose that we have two cycles and um, we can note the diminishing returns. And this is not unique to Ethereum Bitcoin. This is also shown with Bitcoin over the course of 11 years. There have been many market cycles. Um, this is showing the ROI from market cycle bottom. You can see that not only is it taking longer to see peaks, but that they're diminishing as well. Um, so it, we're, we're seeing diminishing returns and the time to see those returns is also getting longer, or it's getting longer and the, the ROI is getting smaller. So just consider that, I, you know, you can see that the, the, the time needed to get to, um, you know, a local peak took a little bit longer than it did in the first cycle. And maybe we'll see something similar in, in a potential third cycle. Now, if, if Bitcoin can stay above the 20 week moving average for the next several weeks, then I will be very bullish on Ethereum in the short term. Um, if we fall below the 20 week, then I'll be very bearish on Ethereum in the short term. But if we can hold the 20 week, and if Bit and if Ethereum does start to start to move, then we probably are going to want to take profits. Not that this is financial advice, but we probably would want to take profits, you know, on the way up and not wait to get not wait for it to get to say 15, 20x, because likely it's not going to get there. Um, and it would be wise, you know, I think, to dollar cost average yourselves. Um, so uh, with that said, you know, if, if and, and another reason why I don't think we're going to quite make it there is because if Ethereum were to 20x with respect to Bitcoin now, it would put the ratio at like 0.385. And I don't really see us getting there, at least not anytime soon, and maybe not even ever, to be honest. Um, but maybe we could get back to say 0.1 or, or you know, or at least or um, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, maybe 0.15, something like that. You know, th those things aren't necessarily out of the question, um, but it's just when, you know, when might it happen? Um, and it has to be, occur of course, if and when another bull run occurs in the cryptocurrency market and Ethereum is part of it. So um, let's just keep moving on here. So if um, if if we were to, to uh, start to see a move with... Ethereum with respect to Bitcoin, then this point, um, you know, a hundred, like, you know, a couple, a few months ago would actually have already started this third market cycle. So this red line is maybe cut off here and we would add this portion to this region over here. And, you know, maybe we're, we're nearing the time that we're going to start moving up and only time will tell the next few weeks whether Bitcoin holds the 20 week moving average as support or if it falls below it. If it holds it as support and Ethereum starts moving up with respect to Bitcoin, then make sure you have a plan. Make sure you're the smart money and, and, and have a plan for what you're going to do because it can happen quickly. You know, these moves in the cryptocurrency market, these massive moves can occur in the matter of a few days or a few weeks. And I don't think we're going to see anything as explosive as we have in the past. But even if we were to move up, say, more slowly over the course of, you know, say, three or four months and then and then kind of come back down for a little bit, just have a plan in place. And I do have a risk indicator that I, I do give some updates on um, for free. And then I <clears throat> I do also have a, um, a, a Patreon channel if anyone wants to check it out. Um, it's just like patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse. And um you know, the, it'll also come with a subscription to the full edition of Ethereum Letters, which will be an extensive report I will publish in a couple weeks. And you'll also get these patron-only updates um, every two or three days, and you'll get access to a, a patron-only chat room. So if you guys like this content, please, again, subscribe to the channel. Sorry my voice is, is kind of leaving me at this point. I'll probably take a couple days off from recording. So um, I appreciate your guys' um, you know, support and, and watching the channel and, and uh, liking the videos and commenting down below. Um, and, and just lastly, I, you know, I, I thought about maybe adding a little small segment at the end of some of my videos where I just make a comment about some of the comments that I see you guys make. And, and one I thought was just especially hilarious. It was 
this guy saying, um, you know, oh, this guy's boring. He just speaks in a monotone voice. And, uh, you know, I just, I tuned out and, and didn't really care to watch it. And I'm like, well, you know, this is not a, a day trade channel with a fast talking crypto YouTuber trying to explain why Bitcoin is down 30% in one day. That's not me. If that's you, this is not the right channel for you. Um, if you're more into the educational perspective of macro level, v, uh, macro level moves in the market, momentum shifts and how you can go from being, say, smart money or how you can go from being dumb money to smart money in the long term, then I think this channel is for you. Um, but I just thought it was funny. Uh, so let me know what you guys think of the video. If you guys agree with it, disagree with it, um, let me know in the comments below and I will talk to you next time. Bye.